at its best. And, and building connections, right? Building the relationships. That's, you know, we talk about that all the time. All the time. And there's no shortage of how you can up your game and help another professional, another friend, another person out. There's no shortage. We're going to talk about some of those great topics today. I think yeah. I'm really excited about today's live. I mean, I could talk about this for an hour. <laughs> hey, maybe we will. Oh, we won't have an hour today, but close to it, right? Close to it. Yeah. 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 It's a great topic. Exactly. And we are live. Good morning, Facebook Good morning, live. Facebook land. How's everybody doing today? <laughs> Yeah, look at that. Okay, well, we have friends with us. Yeah. yeah, we have friends chatting with us and talking to mm -hmm. us. So first, I'd like to take just take the screen for a minute. Just want to okay, do this. Let me let me let me let me okay. just want to show the spotlight on you. Hang okay. on a second. I just want to show everyone go. the transition. So to everyone, you know that I'm growing my gray hair out. My name is Catherine Asaro Myers, affectionately known as Rara. So I have black hair, dark hair, and I've been lightening it up. So when you grow your gray hair out, you can do the cold turkey thing, but I wanted to do the um, Italian thing. So <laughs> I've been growing my hair out due to lockdown and everything, everything that's been going yeah. on. Yeah. So I decided I'm going to go natural because I had a reaction to something on my skin. Mm -hmm. And when I went to my hairdresser, we talked about what we would do. And I won't go into the whole show about it, but I do want to say thank you for supporting me. I am growing my hair out. I will have 50 shades of gray. I will have black <laughs> and white hair. I will make a thing out of this. I will make a big thing out of this so that it doesn't look like gray hair and blonde hair. But this is a process. So I want to thank you for all of the support and the comments and the messages and the phone calls and the texts because it makes such a huge difference to be supported during this transition of going gray, natural. Nice. Thank you. And uh, Laura says you're rocking it. So. Oh, thank you, Laura. And welcome, Michelle and Anushka. Thanks for being here. We appreciate it uh, and all your comments. Mm, hey, Ben. You. Cool. Ben made it. Ben all Powell, right. Yep, Ben Powell. Yeah. Here, yep. All right. Work with Ben. That's what he says. Thank you so much for being here, Ben. Yeah. Michelle says it's going to look fabulous. Mm, it's it's a process, right? It is definitely a process. And when you have hair that's 30 inches long, like ladies, this is down down my back, like all the way to the top of my pants. It's like, uh, what was her? It was uh, Crystal Gale, for the, for those who know who Crystal Gale is, had hair like that. She, I think it went down past, like almost to her knees at one point. I don't know if it's still really? long. But yeah. Well, I cut it and it's just, you know, it's a, it's a blessing. It is definitely a blessing, but it's a huge change. I'm going to have to change to all you photographers out there. I'm going to have to change all my headshots. We're going to have to take all new promo shots for all of our things. So when this is done or however, I mean, I, I believe I have another friend out here. I'm going to, I don't want to mispronounce your name. So I'm going to say Mahoon, but I'm, I definitely have to get it right. So let me look it up. Um, you'll let me know if she's out here. We're going to ask our photographer friends. Tell me when it looks ready. When will it look good enough to shoot? That's right. what I'm curious about right. because you know how it will look on camera. Right. And that's sort of important to us. Ma Mahoon, I think. Um, is she out there with us? I, I don't see her there in the comments, but. Uh... It's Manur. Okay, let me be correct about this. It's M-A-H-N-O-O-R, -M Manur Kashif. So if she's out there, she's going to check it out and tell us what mm. she thinks about when we can take a picture. Anush a Anushka says you will be sisters. I'm assuming, oh. Anushka, that you've already grown yours out or are growing yours out. Okay. Well, yes. She. Uh, let me just go answer. Uh, and, uh, our, and Michelle says she's going to have to create a new necklace for you that will complement. <gasps> oh, that's exciting. Michelle, like that, so. yeah. I love that idea. Yeah. yeah. You know what? This is what I mean about support. Yes. This is really important because color and, and uh, let me tell you what Michelle does. So shout out to Michelle Mayer. Michelle makes Zoom statement necklaces. And we, uh, we wore them on Gratitude Girls. So I have to tell you, when you come on and you, you know, you have a necklace, like I have a little necklace on mm. today, Michelle, so that must be why you're saying it. When we have a Zoom necklace on, we walk into the room. <laughs> so get with Michelle and talk to her. She's got some cool things coming up. She's made some amazing, amazing statement pieces. They're called Zoom statement pieces. Awesome. Right. Let's, right. let's so get to let's, it. Let's get to the, I, I, I didn't introduce myself. 
Yes, please uh, I'm do. I'm Joe, Dr. Energy Piazza. So welcome to our stream today. The topic we're going to talk about today is how to be a great guest on an interview, whether it's digital or whether it is live with the person who's doing the interviewing. And we're just going to offer you some tips that are going to make your interview experience better, not only for yourself, but also for the person who is interviewing you. Or if you're doing the interview that you can guide your guests on how to be a great guest. So Dr. Energy, can I start? Of course, ladies first. Okay, awesome. So I wanna say this about being a guest. First of all, if you're invited to be a guest, then accept that as accept that as a compliment because it it really does mean something it means something when someone says would you like to be a guest on my show or on my podcast and take it seriously so take it like you're going to, going to do your own personal debut for something there's a process around everything and it can be smooth because well because we can make it smooth so ladies and gentlemen Consider that a very big deal every time that someone asks you to appear somewhere, even if you're appearing for yourself. Take pride. Take pride in your emotions. Take pride in your, your health, in your mental and emotional and your spiritual well-being so that when you do speak, it comes through. That's the inside. We'll talk about the outside. We'll hit some tips on that. But I want to make sure that you really honor where you are so that the essence of who you are comes out in your interview. That was my first point. Good. I guess I should unmute myself. One of the, yes. uh, <laughs> one of the, one of the tips you need to do, make sure when you go to speak, you're unmuted. <laughs> uh, too funny. <laughs> Hey, Ben, great to meet you as well. And Manur, great for you, very happy for you to be here. So Catherine was giving you a shout out. So it's great to see that you are here. Thank you. Thank you for being here. So Dr. Energy, would you like to give the first tip about how to be a great podcast guest? Absolutely. Absolutely. So one of the things that you want to do when you are going to be a guest, especially if it's digital as we are, you know, online these days, if you're on live, first of all, you're going to use whatever computer or device that you have available to you. That's the first thing. However, there are certain levels. There's like a level one, a level two, and a level three that you can that you can do. If the only thing you have is your phone connected to Wi-Fi, that's great. Use that. However, if you have a laptop, I highly recommend using that instead. And the third would be going, if you have a desktop versus a laptop, I would use that because the, they are, the level of stability increases as you go. The next, and then the other thing that you want to do con connected to the device you're using is if you can be wired with your internet connections instead of using Wi-Fi, it's going to be a better experience as well. Generally, the speeds are a little bit better when you're connected and it's more stable and you're not as likely to lose your connection in the middle of an interview. So that's one of the big things that we recommend. Um, and because you don't want to drop out in the middle of interview, it happens, if, especially with a live stream with when you're recording, it's a little bit, it's not as big of a deal because you can reconnect and, and edit out. But when you're live, like we are now, it, it's not a question of if something's going to go wrong, but when. Something will happen, somebody's connection will get lost, or somebody's computer will overheat, or something like that, and it's going to happen. So you just have to be prepared for it. Awesome. Thank you. I'm going to take it from a slightly different perspective for mm. those high fact finders and want to think about this in a format. So before you go on to your interview, there's before, during, and after. Before you get onto that interview, there are things that you might want to consider. So I'm going to talk about that. First of all, you want to engage with your hosts. So make sure that your hosts have the information that they need. We are extremely streamlined in this process. So we have a form that you fill out. We ask you for your links. We ask you for your photo. So for us, and I'll speak about us, 
we put this in your calendar, we have an online booking system, it all goes very smoothly. <clears throat> what you can do as a guest is comply, make sure that all those things are given to your host so the host has it, go out to your network and let them know, hey, I'm gonna appear on BU Network Podcasts. I'm gonna be on their live stream. Let people know what you're going to do so that number one, you can engage with your audience. Number two, you could edify the hosts. And number three, you can see what type of interest you have with people about the podcast you're going to be on because conversations are important. That's relationship building. So prior to getting on that podcast, give the host what they need, be ready, know what the host need as well. So if they ask you for something, certainly do that. There's one little step you can go above and beyond. You can thank the host before the event. You could create a little video and say, hey, thanks, Dr. Energy and Rara for having me on. I'm really looking forward to it. Let me tell you why you might want to do that. Because your audio and your video, your camera and your sound will give that host an idea of what you're going to sound like prior to the show. So that way your show will not need that much prep ahead of time. Regardless, you're going to be there 15 minutes before, but you can give a sample of what it's like. So I recommend before the actual podcast, think of it like, I don't know, think of it like cooking. Go out and figure out the recipe and then go out and buy the ingredients and then make sure you have everything and then put it together. Like, isn't that how we would do it if we wanted it to come out right? No different with podcasting. You want to make sure that you are engaged with your host and your audience and that you do everything possible. And don't be afraid to hit that button and thank the host prior to and thank them for inviting you. It might seem a little scary, but come on, it's only a video. <laughs> It's just video, it's just an audio. And on that note, you know, before you get to the, to the interview, as Catherine mentioned, you want to be there early ahead of time. So if you're scheduled to record at say 11 a.m., show up at 10.45, be ready so that if the, if the interviewer, the host invites you in, you're ready to go and you can test your equipment with the host after already testing it yourself. So there's a little bit of prep work that goes into being a great guest. The other thing that you want to do is if you're going to use your phone, don't walk around with it. That is nauseating to the people watching. If it's a video interview, um, I can't tell you how many times I've watched video, and this goes for not just for the phone, but also on laptops. People have the camera set below their face, and it looks up, and we can see right up your nose. Nobody wants to see up anybody's nose. Try to have a cam the camera perched or mounted level with your eyes or just above your eyes so it looks like you're looking at the person. If you have the camera below it, you're looking down into the camera, and nobody likes being looked down on. So get the setup right before you're going live, especially if it's video. If it's audio, you could walk around a little bit, but the problem with that is then the microphone, if you're using a head, when you're using a headset, and we'll get to that in a moment, it bounces around and you can hear like tapping like this on the microphone. You can hear the voice fading in and out as the person's walking around and the microphone's moving. So try to be in one place, whether it's standing or sitting, that's up to you. Awesome. Thank you. Great point. So on the topic of during, right, we talked about before. So during your interview, great point. Definitely arrive early. Mm -hmm. Be fun and engaging, ladies and gentlemen. Be fun and engaging on the podcast. Don't be too serious. Lighten up. Take a breath. Let your audience know that you have a, an amazing personality. Be aware of the platform. So we're on Facebook Live right now. Facebook Live, we need to be quick and engaging. What if we're on Twitter, Twitch? What if we're on LinkedIn? What if we're on Instagram? Be aware of the platform. When you go on to this interview, ask, where will this be shown? Think about how you need to respond. Do you ski? Do you play a sport? How many things do you need to be aware of to make sure that you're going to deliver? properly. And aside from being aware of the platform, be aware of the interviewer. 
watch the body language if you have audio uh, video and if you just have audio listen be aware of the interviewer catch what is going on because there is a tone to that show there's a tone to that podcast and make sure that you're incongruent with it so be yourself of course but watch what's happening so if this is a business interview you might want to take that tone so that you are giving the audience who is watching, who are watching what they're expecting. Be aware, eyes wide open, ladies and gentlemen, just keep your eyes on the audience. Make sure that the audience is getting value. So during your interview, don't think about what you want to say. Oh, I want to tell them about my, think about the other people watching you. That's a great tip for right. during. And you know, you said something there about isn't isn't there a movie Eyes Wide Open or Eyes, Eyes, no, Wide, Eyes Shut. Wide Shut? Right, right. That's what it you is. want to talk about that movie? Yeah, no, I don't think this is the, the, the it's not the I don't think that's the topic for this uh, for this live stream. We could talk about it later, maybe we'll see. <clears throat> um, so we talked about a little bit about the microphone and and what and how to connect that way. You can use the built-in mic in your desktop or your laptop or your or just the, holding the phone up if you're just doing audio. If you're just doing audio, the, that microphone of the of the on the phone is fine as long as you maintain it close to your mouth. Now the problem with it is if you have it on speakerphone, then your microphone is then going to pick up your your host's voice or the other person's voice coming back through the, the speaker and you're going to get this reverberation and this echo and what we know from using microphones is that the closer you are to the microphone because it's what we call signal to noise ratio and your voice is the signal the noise is everything else so the closer we can be to our microphone the more the better it can distinguish the signal your voice and the noise, all the background stuff going on around you. So this is why when you're on an interview, whether it's video or audio only, you want to use some sort of a headset. So by having something in your ear, I'm actually using a clear colored headphone, so it's hard to see. So I, I kind of like these because they, they're, they're not there. And then I kind of run the cord down my, down my back. I'm kind of sitting on the cord a little bit. There it is. So I just run it down my back so you can't see it. So it just looks like I'm having a great conversation. But by having a headset, you're going to isolate the other person's voice coming back to you and it won't pick up in your microphone. So you don't get the feedback. The other thing is when you are sitting further from your microphone, I'm going to demonstrate here a little bit. I'm just going to move slowly move the microphone away from my voice. You can probably hear it gets a little bit echoey and my voice gets a little bit more faint and you end up hearing more of the room because now this microphone has to struggle to pick up the signal, my voice, versus when I bring it back here. So wherever possible, at the bare minimum, use a headset plugged into your phone or into your uh your computer or your laptop. And if you need to get an extension cord, you can, those extension cords are easy to get in eight, 10 bucks, something like that. Any Best Buy, whatever, Amazon, all those places. So using a headset and the microphone and the headset is, is sort of the next step up from using the built-in microphone and camera in your, in your computer. And then you could go to the next step and you could use an external microphone like I'm using here. This happens to be the Blue Yeti. Catherine uses the same one in a different color. And we use both use external webcams. I use a Logitech C920. Catherine uses a Aver Media uh, camera. And so that's sort of the next level. Now with today's phones, cell phones, they actually have better signal processors in them than webcams do. You're actually going to get a better video quality with your current, if you especially have a brand new like iPhone 12 or Google Pixel 5 or Samsung S21, any of those things, you're going to get an even better video quality. Love those points. Mm. I'll just touch on lighting. I won't say much about it. I'm just going to say lighting. Ladies and gentlemen, think about what you look like. I want to talk about engaging. 
So I'm going to hop on, hop on over. What kind of accent is what accent is that? That New York slang coming out. <laughs> I'm from New York to our audience sitting here in Canada, and I'm still from New York. So I want to talk about after the podcast. <clears throat> Can't take the New York City out of the girl. Nope. <clears throat> you want to continue your relationship with your host. So what does that mean? <clears throat> podcast is over. Hey, thanks, Dr. Energy. Thanks, Rara. I really appreciate you having me on the show. Let me know when you guys release it or if it's live, you know, can I have the link and can I have the marketing for it? What about <clears throat> engaging? Engage with the host, but go onto the platform and engage with the audience. Take it a step further. And I don't mean pitch the audience. I mean, engage with the audience. Talk to them, communicate with them, thank them for being there. Take that relationship to the next level. Okay, on this, yeah, great. I was going to talk about that. Go check out the uh, resources. So <laughs> the next thing I want to talk about is what's the next step to thanking someone? Create a video. Say, hey, thank you so much for having me on your podcast. That was awesome. Let me share a few ideas. Maybe you can give an insight to how the guest and how the host can work with you. There's nothing wrong with putting out a one or two minute video to the host, thanking them again. So you did a video before saying you're really excited. Now you did another one after. It's a little bit of work. And think about what you're going to say. You could develop a long-term partnership, a JV partnership, by taking that extra initiative. If you show up and disappear like a beautiful snowflake or a raindrop, then that's what you are. If you go an extra step, if you take it to the next level, then that's who you are. And that's where the magic happens. So develop the relationship beyond the event. Go the extra mile. Kilometer. <laughs> depending on where you're from. Excellent. So the next thing you want to talk about while you're being interviewed, we talked a little bit about laptop and phone using that as your um, source. Uh, what you want to make sure you're doing when you're using your laptop or your phone, one is make sure that you have a full charge, especially on your on, on the phone, the batteries tend to be a little bit more efficient than on a laptop. But when you start running live, when you start using video and uploading it through a browser, or all that kind of stuff, the system resources of your device go way up. And so you want to make sure if you can to be plugged in, have your power cord plugged into your laptop, have your power, if you can charge, your phone can be charging while or plugged in while you're using it even better because it will doing, doing this type of live, live events or recordings will chew your battery very, very quickly. So you want to make sure you have enough, enough charge. The other thing is if you're on video and you're doing a, a live uh, interview with, with somebody, do not watch the live stream of your live stream. So in other words, don't have another browser window opening, browser, easy for me to say, another browser window open that shows what's actually being sent out to the audience because that's gonna, again, increase the resources of your system very high and it becomes, and then the signal can get choppy and out of sync. And that also goes to using, when I talked about headphones, with Bluetooth headphones, you have to be careful if you're using the microphone in the headphones, in, in a Bluetooth headphone, sometimes there can be synchronizing issues and the voice can get out of sync with the video, which, you know, if somebody's watching, I think that can be very disturbing, especially for a visual person. For an auditory person, they can just tend to tune it out or they turn off the video and then just listen. So make sure that you've got things, you know, you've considered some of these things. As Catherine also mentioned about lighting, lighting makes a huge difference if you're on a video stream. What you want to do is have lighting coming 
from the front of you wherever possible. If you have lights on behind you or a window behind you and it's very sunny, it can end up looking very washed out because it's going to overpower the camera, uh, especially if it's a webcam or a cell phone camera. It, that, that amount of light can overpower the lens and the filters of the camera and it'll end up looking all kind of, your face will look dark in relation to the light background. So have the light in front of you coming towards your face and play with it so that you get the angle right. Mine, I actually have a light up to, the, to my left here and it's actually facing the wall and reflecting the light off the wall so I get a bit of a diffused effect and you don't get the bright spot like I have on my forehead over here. That's from the window that's to my right that you can probably see to my right and it's a very bright sunny day here in Ottawa so that's kind of washing me out a little bit. I probably could have closed the curtains and that would have improved it. So, you know, we all learn as we go. Dr. Energy, I, I love this mm. topic. You know how sometimes people are putting their like green screen, if they have a green screen, or they're using a lot of the filters these days because mm. that's just an easy thing to do. So it, if you're thinking about doing that because you want to show your business in the background, so we'll just talk about presentations and forget about being a guest on someone's podcast at this moment, just for a minute. When you are live communicating with people, consider that an interview. When you put a screen behind you and you move, it cuts your hair, it cuts your shoulder, you look like you're sort of a ghost. In and out. Yeah. I understand that maybe your background isn't amazing or you don't have the opportunity to have a, a designated room because you're in the middle of your living room or your dining room. <laughs> I okay. get I get that, but yes, exactly. The audience wants to see your real live scenario. Be you. So in this particular case, so this is my bridge room. This is my studio. This is my lights are here. I have a three light set up. I have a 27 inch monitor. I have a, my blue Yeti because I love blue. It's and it's blue. actually blue. Yeah, look at that. I want to show it. Okay. Okay. And you know, we talked about it being a front addressed mic. So you know how I'm speaking into it. So think about what's happening when you're moving and you have like the picture of the beach behind you. It may not be the best background. It may not be the most authentic. So consider finding a spot in your home, your home office that you could actually set up and think about how you look. And we talk about light and I, I can give you like a whole, a whole thing on this. I can give you a light show. I have a 12 inch ring light on a tripod where I can put my phone in it and I can, I have remote control over all of this and I can make this look like daylight. I can make it look like studio light. I can turn it down, which is cool. So if it's 12 o'clock at night or nine o'clock at night, I can turn all my lights on and look like I have sunlight on me. So I can adjust how this looks and you can do that too. So as Dr. Energy talked about with the natural light, it may not be your friends, because it will shine into your lens. So when it shines into your lens, your lens then can't focus the same way. And I think Ingrid mentioned this one of the first lives we went on. A little while back, yeah. Exactly. So when you leave the natural light to shoot into your lens, then it's going to make, obviously it's going to make it a little bit fuzzy. So if the light comes at you, that's why you see ring lights in front of you. Mm, Alexis reminding me to meditate. So when you have the ring light or the lights in front of you, it shines on you. Think about the movies. This is a reminder. Meditate. Am I activating everybody else's Alexa? So when you have the lights on you, you're lit up. I won't do it right now, but I can turn on my other side lights and put yellow filters or blue filters. Maybe I'll do it while you're speaking, Dr. Energy, and I'll just show what that sure. looks like. And then the lighting really makes a huge difference. And then I'll show you when you position your light, how you don't want it to shine in your eyes and you don't want them to shine in your glasses, actually, I should say. You don't want it to have a reflection. So know when you have your lighting, the best way for you to sit. I'll do a demonstration while you're speaking, and I'll turn my camera off, and I'll set it up if that's okay with you. Sure, sure. Okay, awesome. There you go. You're free to do it. <laughs> no one will see. Thank you. <laughs> Until you're ready to show it. So the lighting can make any camera look better it can make you look better and it can make your host look better or in this case your guest and these are all things that you want to run through so if you are the interview host and you're inviting people on 
these are things that you can run through and check with them before you actually do an interview or before you hit the record button. And for example, we had a, a great, we've, we were just talking the, earlier this morning, Rara and I, about how we've had a couple of guests recently who have, are, have been in the media industry for a while and are used to being on camera and in front of a microphone. So they have a more pro setup. In fact, one of them has an even more pro setup than we do. And the, the, difference between that and the guests who don't have that set up, you can hear it in the sound quality. And it's just, when we get to work with somebody like that, who has that professional setup, it's a joy in that we don't have to spend time going through all the setup, double checking everything. We just have to do a quick sound check and make sure the volume is, is good enough. And, and then boom, we go. Whereas with somebody who's, who's less experienced, and of course, everybody's at a different place on the journey, and, and that's totally cool. And that's why we're here, is to help people on the journey to get to up their game to, to a new level so that they can be give the best to their audience. And that's really what we're, we're all about. Now, Ben, I saw that you just commented about having the problem of the lights reflecting your glasses. So if I look up, you can probably see the ring light reflecting in my glasses. So what I do is I actually have, instead of having the ring light right in front of me behind my camera, I actually have it up higher and angled down a little bit so you don't get that angle, that, that reflection on your glasses. The other thing you want to have, you'd like, you can try to do is whenever you're working in a browser environment or you have the computer screen on and it's in front of you because that will reflect off your glasses as well is use dark mode because the dark mode won't reflect off your glasses especially if it's at night because the screen the screen brightness will reflect off your glasses and then we can't see your eyes so use dark mode wherever possible and that will make a huge difference as well and it won't reflect off your glasses as well or if you're able to wear contact lenses because that's that can work that can work better and then you can get that neat ring effect in the eye in the eyes the way that you know you see in the models have and that so i'm looking at my other monitor here and I'm seeing that I think Catherine has got her light set up ready to go. So I'm going to switch right from me over to her and you're going to see some of what you can do with lighting. So I'll show you lighting without my glasses. So this way I don't have any reflections. I have two side lights. I have a three light setup. I have two side lights with a yellow filter. You can see when I have my glasses on, I will have to move those in order for them not to show up in my glasses. So I'll take them off. What happens when you have these lights? So I have remotes. So I'll show you what happens when they go really bright. It's too washed out. We don't want that. But I can lower them. They're LED lights. So in lowering them, I'm a little washed out as well here. You can adjust that. It's easier for me to wear my glasses. Also, you can change, well, I can change my ring light. So this is my big light above me, green. Mm -hmm. This is blue. This is weird. Yikes. This is red, <laughs> I know, that's scary. This is orange. These are different shades of purple. So if you want, now I just raised the intensity of that. So I want you to know that you can, in fact, change how you look. And sometimes it's for the better. I'm going to turn the side lights off so that you can see what happens when I turn them off. They weren't on before. So now we're back to the way that I was. There's nothing wrong with it. It looks different. And you can make yourself look as showy or as natural as you like, just depending upon your lighting. I'm sitting in a room with all the blinds closed. That way, the natural light is not affecting my camera. Right. It's more diffuse. So it's, right. And you can see in this lens right here, you can see my blinds, although they're closed and they're solid, you can see that the sun is coming through them. 
So if you wear glasses, you really do need to position yourself so that that doesn't show up. You have to be really aware as of as, that. As good as possible. A little bit is, is, is okay, right? We're still, we're still yes, natural, it's, right? So It's still natural. But if yeah. you are recording, if let's say you're recording a course or mm -hmm. you're recording something where you really need the attention of your audience, you'll want to position yourself, like we said before, so that you're not showing like up your nose. You want the camera at a right, at the right height. You know, we talk about these malfunctions, like just don't worry about the wardrobe malfunction, do whatever you can do so that you don't have to fuss with it because it's important that you just don't fuss and then whatever else happens. Mm -hmm. So the lighting can change everything. Yes. And, and that goes for your, for your background as well. Like Catherine talked about earlier about not using the green screen function or the virtual backgrounds. So if you're actually, if you're using an actual green screen behind you, that's the drape that has the green, the, that green color, it's actually called a chroma key. And so if you're going to use one of those in order to use it properly, you actually have to have separate lights lighting that up so that there, it, there's no shadows on it so that the computer can key it out and put in an actual background. Now, when you use an actual green screen like that and it's done properly, it can look good. You have to get the perspective, the, the picture that you put up behind you, the perspective needs to be right so that it looks natural. If the perspective's off, the, your audience's eye is gonna be distracted and they're gonna, eh, it doesn't look quite right. The virtual ones, people are using fun stuff and, and and once in a while, we'll in a Zoom meeting, I'll put one up as well, just to have fun. Like if we're if if people are feeling a little bit goofy, we'll put up. You know, now Zoom has has some um, studio effects, right? They have the the eye, different eyebrows, hats, and glasses, and stuff like that. So I'll do that every once in a while to have a little bit of fun. But I don't use it all the time. You can see behind me here. There's like a blue light behind this TV screen that's that's behind me, and what that is is that's just a simple fifteen dollar six foot LED strip mounted to the back of my TV and turned on. I don't have the remote in my hand. The remote's on the shelf right here. And I can change the color of it. I can change if it blinks. I can change the brightness of it. And I just leave it up behind me there. You can also see on top of this bookshelf, this is a string of Christmas lights, actually. Again, 10 or 15 bucks at your local store. And it just makes the background a little bit more interesting. I feel like I need something up in this corner on the wall here, maybe just to kind of fill in the spot. I don't know. You guys could tell me, mm. but I, I think, but you know, we have some interesting stuff in the background here. Like, like this little clown lying on his back was given to me by, to buy an uncle. I have my Gumby back over here. I have Gumby and Pokey over here. This thing I call voodoo head thing. And there's a fun story behind that from a baseball tournament in, in Niagara Falls, actually. So you can make your background as interesting as you like and let it show some aspect of yourself. People want to connect with you. And this can even be in a business meeting. People want to get to know who you are. Now, you're not going to have all the blinking, flashing lights in a business meeting because that will probably drive people crazy. But at least, you know, having something like this behind you that reflects who you are, people can connect with you. That's a great point. And I'd love to show in a minute what happens when I turn my LED lights off. But before that, ladies, do you ever have a bracelet that you really love? <laughs> when you're on a live, if it hits the desk, if your mic is on the desk, it might pick it up as it will the sound of your mouse. If your mic is off, but you still might want to consider that you will remove the pieces of jewelry that will make noises to that might distract people. So I, I do that. And then I, I remember I did a show once I did the Debbie, <laughs> the Debbie Travis show on my company, Brooklyn Heights. And when we were doing that entire show with the makeover, they said, you know, take off your bracelets. And I said, okay, but I didn't. And I was, I wanted to keep them on because they meant something to me. So I remember having to move my hand like that so that they didn't all jingle because I wore, as you can tell, I wear a lot of bracelets. So uh, when you wear them, be aware. So now they have these little dangling things. If you can keep them on, just don't move your hand and hit anything. So in terms of lighting, you'd, you'd be surprised what one little button does or doesn't do. Thank you. 
no LED lights. It's boring. What a difference. Yeah, that's, what a difference that makes. It and you, you make, if you feel like you're, ble- I feel like you're blended into the background now, whereas when you turn it on, it, it sort of pops you out from the background and we can see you more. Right. And here I have them going like this maybe is a little bit distracting for uh, for a meeting but i have seven different options so here they're flashing okay it's not it's not really the best thing just want to give you i know my voice is changing because i'm sitting away i just want to give you the idea because i have an open bookcase how much better that light looks and thanks to david foster shout out impartial, impartial geek. geek i am going to put more LED lights up here, (laughs) even though it's my natural background, but I'm going to put them up the wall. I'm going to put them (laughs) around. I got to do it. I I love, love lighting and sound. I really do. David David does love his LED lights. He's got an amazing background. Now, David, just so everybody knows, if you do go check out at Impartial Geek, he's here on Facebook. He's also on YouTube. And for those of you who know Twitch, he also streams over on Twitch. And he's been doing live streaming for over 10 years. And so he's he's helped a lot of um, professional streamers out. He's done work with people like Michael Hyatt, Amy Porterfield, who you might, you might have heard of those two. And his background, he's also really big into you know superhero movies especially marvel and star wars as well so his background reflects a lot his one of his favorites is actually tron uh for those of you who are 80s babies or or older know tron from the 80s that was a you know sort of a a benchmark or seminal seminal movie uh at the time and which they rebooted again a few years back um and so his his background really reflects that. You're probably gonna not gonna want to have the setup that he has unless you're gonna get into professional live streaming. Uh, I want his setup. Yeah, I want, I, his, I want setup. his setup too because we're doing that and we're teaching that. So we, you know, it. we're starting to we're starting to up our game. And I mean, where we've come from in the last eighteen months from when we started our our podcast to where we are now, right? Is um, it's like it's like from here to here, right? We've got, we've, we've upped our game, our production level, how we edit our, our podcasts, all of those things, how we market it. Um, and just, you know, shout out our latest podcast episode just came, just popped out today. It's Sherry Breyer, uh, just, uh, amazing woman, women rock project. Uh, we had a great conversation with her about empowerment and being ourselves and, uh, you can head on over to our website. I can pop up the uh, the link there and check out her episode. You can listen to it on our website, or you can subscribe in whatever podcast app that you listen in uh, on. We're, we're there under BU Space Network, and uh, subscribe to our podcast. We'd love to love to see you see you there. And yeah, I'd like to mention two things. One mm-hmm. about Sherry belly dancing. <laughs> yes, belly dancing videos. That's one thing. Then I'd like to talk about, can you mention David's headset? I'm buying it. Oh, yes, yes, yes. So uh, an impartial geek, David Foster, he has this, uh, it's called V Moda. It is a brand of headphones and they're really nice. They're like audio file quality headsets. Um, and the uh, the V Moda ones, they come in different colors. And in fact, they come in white. I'm getting which it. Catherine is absolutely all over. And the cool part is they're over the they're they're ones that go over the ear, right? With the headband. The headband is nice leather, it's white, and then the ear cups are white. Actually you can you can get different ear cups for them and you can customize them as well, which you know I think we're both kind of planning on. I like the white too, right? I've got the black with the white black glasses with the white arms and and, and that. So I'm kind of leaning towards I'm leaning towards the white ones myself too. So <laughs> and I want to change the mic. Yes. Well, there's again, and there's a great microphone out there called uh, by a company called Lewitt uh, 240C Pro. Again, this is what David Foster uses. It's a white microphone. So everything's black and white. Yeah. No, Joe, Dr. Energy, if David goes and changes all his gear, I'm going to have to change the gear. <laughs> well, he's, he, it doesn't sound like it. He really likes that microphone. Like he, he tests other ones, but he always comes back to the mm-hmm. Lewitt. Mm-hmm. And, uh, 
it's a it's a great and it works really well for his voice because different microphones work differently for each person's voice because all, all our voices are different so well i was thinking that i'll take this blue yeti mm. and my desktop because i'm hardwired in another mm -hmm. part of the house because i'm per i'm hardwired so i'll take this <laughs> this as my second mic and i'll go hardwire my laptop in the other room right. with this camera and then i'll keep my desktop with let's say my new iphone mm. camera however i'm going to do that and the new mic and my white v moda so i'll record here and then if i want to go have like a quick meeting and stand up in the other room and it's not it's going to be boring right it's not going to be like this oh no i guess i'll have to set that room up too then i'll go set that room up also so i'll have <laughs> two different places so i can do one like really funky in case it's just a fun meeting and then right. i can have this really fun and fun key turnkey meeting as well because i think variety Variety is important. So never think that you have too much. Like, what am I going to do with two mics? Or hmm. what am I going to do with two cameras? Is that overkill? You know, you outgrow things. Ladies yeah. and gentlemen, do you buy new shoes and new suits and new purses and new tops? Right. And you, you buy equipment. Like, you outgrow it. And that's fine. And you can have different setups. It's not right. that you need one of. You can change and interchange. You have a studio. If you sell oils or perfume or right. you sell supplements, you have more than one or you sell product or whatever you're in the retail market you just use different things right so i we have our eye on it and uh, we, we're going to change you'll see us making our changes yep. as well you'll notice and you'll you'll do what's best for you you'll exactly. be you so thank you for the comment cecilia interesting dialogue <laughs> we, we, we do our best to keep it edutain we like edutainment right educational and entertaining we want to keep you entertained as well Oops. as share what we know. And we've been doing this for eight years to our audience who's watching us on our live. Our live may be a few months old. Our podcast is 18 months old. Dr. Energy and I have been at this for, and I'm going to say eight years, maybe it's almost it's eight, eight years. years. Yeah. We've been doing this for eight years together. So we have different platforms that we started out. I remember when Alex Makarski mm. gave his first testimonial to us <laughs> after we, we were at the Richmond Hill Country Club yeah, after yeah. the bridge. I thought that was amazing. Who knew then? Imagine if we knew then that we would be doing this. Oh, so God. you I evolved. No I had no idea. Like, I mean, I knew we wanted to do more stuff, but I never thought we'd end up being doing live streams and a podcast and, and all of that. Let's not forget stuff. our YouTube channel. YouTube channel as well. Well, yeah, exactly. Let's let's talk about two more things if we can. So sure. I, I, I'd like to talk about our YouTube channel. If you're new to YouTube, I've had a YouTube channel forever. There's nothing on it. Then I opened up another YouTube channel. There's one thing on it. Now we have a YouTube channel. And YouTube says if you have 100 subscribers, you get to name it. So we have, I'm going to go out on a limb and say 53 or 54. Something I'm not like really, I'm not sure what it is today. When we get 100 subscribers and ring the bell, ladies and gentlemen, you will be notified. Then we can name our channel. And that's what we're looking to do. We want to name it so that it's whatever the name is. I know there's another you out there or mm. no this there's somebody else out there we'll we'll get to name it as soon as we get to 100 subscribers so you know that song ring the bell ring my bell, ring my bell. we That's can't say too much of it yeah i can't go too far with that so if you do go onto youtube and you can follow us there we are repurposing that's what the that's what the term is called we're repurposing our content and you can go there now i want to give you one more tip Remember we it. talked about being a podcast guest or an interview guest. Imagine this, go open up a YouTube channel. I know I'm saying it like it's like nothing. Open up a YouTube channel. It's pretty easy and, to open one up. And then go create. If you've ever been on anyone's show or on anyone's anything, you can go and create a private channel, a playlist is what I meant to say. And that playlist could be you interviewing, being interviewed by other people. So when you have a guest, maybe you want to approach them with the JV, a joint venture, you can say, these are the interviews, these are the podcasts, these are the shows that I've been on. Let me show them to you. So you can create a library. So if you look at YouTube, go onto our YouTube channel. We're new with this channel. We yeah. have- I put, the link. I put the link in the comments. Awesome. We have five or six different um, episodes, I guess. We try to release them. We try to release an episode on, on every Tuesday. 
Okay. So that's what we're doing there. So you can go and see pretty much what you're seeing now, but on YouTube, it's the second largest search engine. So if you want to see what's happening, like we, we spend a lot of time on YouTube. <laughs> we're, you know, we're YouTubers. So if you want to go and do something as, as a guest, once you've appeared on someone's podcast or show, go create a playlist. So that way you can have a collection. So if that's new to you and you're not really sure what that means, you can get with us and you can talk to us because we'd be happy. We'd be happy to discuss any of the new things that you might be doing as we're doing after eight years, we're doing new things as well. Exactly. Got to keep growing, right? So I'm going to share one last bonus tip for you when you are being interviewed, either being interviewed or are interviewing somebody else. Pretend that your microphone and your camera are always on and that somebody can see and hear you. You never know. Sometimes we hit the mute button or we think we hit the mute button and we didn't or we hit the stop camera button and we didn't. And we might say something, right? Because you want to be careful with your language. You can you can do some swearing here and there, cursing on some on like YouTube and that because you can mark your channel not safe for kids. And but you just be careful with right what's that what was the movie in the movie the naked gun right leslie nielsen and he goes to the bathroom and his mic and he's got a microphone and it's on and you, people can hear him going to the bathroom you know you don't want to <laughs> you don't want to do that um, so just pretend like your microphone and your camera are always on that's called a blooper dr yeah. energy you want to yes. talk about buy me a coffee i yeah we could do that so if you enjoy this content, we are 100% community funded. And if you enjoyed this content and got something out of it and found it valuable, you and you would like to support us or help us to continue creating more of it, because it does take time and effort and there are some expenses involved with it, you could go over to buymeacoffee.com forward slash BU network or bu.network, no, bu network. I gotta, I gotta, I'll put the, I will put the link in the comments. It's easier that way. And you can buy us a coffee, you can buy us one coffee, a couple of coffees, whatever you like. And we would very much appreciate that. Thank you. Also, the reason why I wanna talk about that is you may wonder, how do you do that? How do I ask people to buy me a coffee? And what is that, what is that like? What does that mean? Well, hang out with us and check the different things that we're doing. And part of what we're doing is demonstrating how to use multiple platforms aside from having a five or a $10 coffee. And we appreciate that, but look at how these platforms work and then see if that's something you're interested in. And then we can show you how to do it. Yeah, absolutely. We're here because we're here to share. We're not, you know, wanting to keep all the information to ourselves. We want to help you do you and how you're going to express yourself is different than the way we express ourselves. You know, Catherine walks in the room and says, rah, rah is <laughs> in the house, right? That's not for everybody. Catherine's born and born and raised in Brooklyn, right? So that is a very, you know, in your face, New York. She's also of a Sicilian Italian descent. So it's very in your face. I happen to be of Sicilian Italian descent as well. So I, I don't have a problem with that in, in your face thing so much. You know, you know, what's the matter for you? It's in your <laughs> face, right? So everybody, how you do you is gonna be different. So just be you because the universe is listening. I love that. And I'm so grateful that I could come here today and show my transformation and <laughs> the physical and the emotional and the spiritual transformation. It means so much to me that our audience is supporting us and Dr. Energy, all the support that you give me. I want to give a shout out to my business partner. It should not go unmentioned that every episode, every show, every podcast, every live, there are many things that get done behind the scenes. If you want to do something and you think, well, I'm going to do that, go ahead, do it. Don't wait. Right. But just the work that, the, just do it. But the work that goes on behind the scenes, it's tremendous. And I want to thank you for all that you do because without you, we wouldn't be here being us. Thank you. I appreciate you as well. The efforts that you put into, you know, a big part of, of you know, I do a lot of the behind the scenes editing and, and, you know, hosting the live stream and doing all the camera switching and all that kind of stuff. 
And you know, you do a lot of the work, especially connecting with our guests. You have a your that's one of your biggest strengths, I think, is that building relationships with people, and you do it so well, and you do it in service of of what we do together. And so, and then also the you know how you, how much effort you put into listening to our podcasts to give me the feedback when I'm editing it and where what we're going to do with it is really really uh, awesome. So thank you. You're welcome. I love every second of it. Anything, any last comments? That is it. Yes. Okay. If you are looking to be a guest on someone's podcast mm. and you're not exactly sure how to go about that, you can get in touch with us. We'll give you some ideas. Let us know, drop a comment and let us know that you would like to be a guest and you're not sure how to approach it. And we'll share a few ideas of how you can do that. And perhaps we can get you ready for that. We can have a very casual conversation. Mm -hmm. We'll hop on a Zoom with you. We'll listen to your audio. We'll take a look at your camera. And then if you want to take it to the next level, obviously we will. A lot of our clients do that. They sort of watch us, ask a question, and then they say, can you help me get ready? We, yeah. can, we can give you some, some quick tips. And if, don't, don't hesitate. Like, go out and ask, ask someone. Be approachable so that you could appear on someone's podcast or show, be interviewed. That way you could share your message. Absolutely. So before we go, I just like to say thank you to all our guests here and Michelle, thank you for subscribing to our YouTube channel. We're much appreciated. Oh, thank you so much. And Michelle. Lenore, thank you very much for uh, the like as well. We appreciate you as thank well. You. And uh, we will be right back here next week at the same bat time, same bat channel with a slightly different topic. <laughs> Remember to follow us on this page besides mm -hmm. like us, because if ever we do anything else, we want you to know by following exactly. us. And you'll get more notifications that way when you follow rather than like. And like. Thank you so much to everyone for being here. Thank you, Ben. Thanks, Ben.